Hello, everybody. We're so glad you're with us this afternoon. I would like to uh, give you some information about our wonderful speaker. Now, whether you are a first time teller or have told stories for a while, this workshop is for you. Get your nuts and bolts of storytelling to take your art to the next level. Vivian, a native historian, a historian and mother of three, is a natural born yard spinner. She defies the joyless library bookworm stereotype. She is a storyteller who does not hush children. She positively entices and inspires kids about reading through vivid tales and commands attention and affection for rap learners of her stories. Let us give a welcome to Vivian Rutherford for our workshop today. Right. Hello, everybody. Hi. It's good to be here. And I want to thank the Teja Storytelling Association for this opportunity to share some nuts and bolts about storytelling. And I want to also congratulate our youth tellers earlier today. They were magnificent. And there will be more of the same tomorrow, Sunday. So don't you dare miss it. It's going to be another fantastic afternoon. Now, there may be some first time listeners or first time storytellers on, and there may be some seasoned tellers. Well, again, this workshop will work for you because we're always in a constant state of learning. And this may be one of those moments where what you hear that you've heard before will just say, hmm, I'm on the right track. I am good. Oh, maybe I need to tweak something here or Goodness, I didn't know that. So this is gonna be for everyone. There's gonna be a little bit of nuts and bolts for everyone. We're gonna walk away saying, hey, this was good. Storytelling is a powerful tool. It can heal, it can influence, it can teach, it can change lives, it can motivate, it can change feelings and attitudes. And if you possess the gift of storytelling, many will be in awe of you. Now you're saying, well, if I am a first time teller, what do I tell? Where do I find these stories? Well, what you wanna do is to find stories that you like and Find stories that will represent the message that you want to share. Well, Miss Vivian, how do I do that? Well, a good place to start would be the 398.2 in the library. Now, you want to go to the library, and that section will be folk tales and fairy tales. And that's the section, those once upon a time stories. Mm -hmm. You go up and you ask that librarian for that 398.2, and trust me, they're gonna be impressed with you. Hey, as a just newly retired librarian, I can vouch. So you walk up and you go, I need to find the 398.2 section. And they go, oh, you want the fairy tales and the folk tales, and you go, that's right. Because those are the stories that have been told from generation to generation, word of mouth. They've been around for almost ever. And you'll find maybe a good story there. There are also tall tales in that section. Those are those bigger than life stories, like those Paul Bunyan and, and John Henry stories. Go for that. Or you might like mm, the Aesop tales. Now, those are the ones with the morals. In our library, we had them in the 800 section. Aesop stories are great stories. Now, I'm going to tell you a secret. You don't have to share this, but here we go. There is another section in the library that you might not be aware of, or you might not even have thought of, and it's the picture book section. I know, wait, 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 where are you going? But that's for the babies, the easy books. No, 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 no. 
you would be surprised of what you found in there. Now there are picture books because the pictures are beautiful. That's why they're there. But there, if you take the time to look and go through them, some beautiful prose, beautiful writings of some of your most favorite authors, but it does take time. You'll need to read through a lot of them till you find the gem that you're looking for. And don't, don't give up. You're gonna find something beautiful in there. Okay, now what I want to do is do a little sharing with you because you know when you're in that easy book section you're going to look for something that has a great beginning a middle and an end so i'm going to share a picture with you and let's do a little practice with the beginning a middle and an end okay i'm going to put a picture up and let's see how it goes oh there it is it's perfect all right does everyone see that gorgeous picture there is a dog eyeballing biscuit. Mm -hmm. Now let's pretend that this is the middle part of your story. How would that go? If this is, you've already started your story and now you're in the middle of it. What would your story say? Now, if you like, you can use your chat over there and type in what you think your story would be saying at this point. And this is the middle part of your story. I'll give you a moment to do that. We'll kind of look and see what you've got. Okay, now we're going to switch that and say, now this is the ending of the story. How would that change the narrative? It's now the ending. Hmm. Okay. Now, how about if this was the very, very beginning of the story? Changes the whole narrative, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. That's pretty amazing, huh? One picture. Mm -hmm. All right. So you've had a chance. I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop the share, but don't stop the creativity. Here we go. We're back. Now. There's another type of story that you can add, and they're called personal stories. Now, I want to emphasize the word personal. That means these stories happened to you or your family. Okay? They're your own stories. Now, I want to make sure that I say that again, because you'll hear lots of other personal stories and you cannot borrow anybody else's personal story for your own. Hmm? Okay, that's why it's called personal. Okay, now, as you tell your personal stories, be sure to incorporate all of the five senses because you're taking them on a fantastic journey. So you want to have them to see what you see, hear what you hear, smell what you've smelled, and taste what you've tasted, and touch what you've touched. So if you're saying a story that happened to you about your dog that was walking, and it was so hot, and he was running, and that his tongue was dragging like, okay, or there was that chocolate cake I was eating, and it tastes so good. It was as good as so something like that. You want to keep them um, right there with you with that, that, that connection. Well, Miss Vivian, I've got my story. I'm ready to prepare. All right, let's do that. Let's prep. So you've got your story. You're going to read it and you're going to read it and reread it and reread it. Now you're going to get a piece of paper. You're going to do a little grid. Okay. You're going to make little squares on your paper. 
and you're going to create something we call a storyboard. Now on your storyboard, you can either draw pictures of the story as it happens, like one square, this is an action, the next square happen next and next and next and so forth and so on. You can do pictures or you can actually write little notes in what happened first, what happened second, what happened next and so forth and so on. Then you want to tell your story using that board right there. This is where you get in there and you can edit. You can take out things that, hmm, I don't really need that part. That doesn't make my story move. You want to keep the most important information in that section there, in that storyboard. And once you get it just right, then you can retell and tell and practice and practice. And then you're ready to tell it. Tell it over and over. Tell it to the mom, the dad, the grown-ups, the dog, the cat, the fish, the rock, anything that will listen. Go to the wall, go to the mirror. Practice, practice, practice until you're ready to perform. Make sure you have a strong beginning and a strong ending because this will give you confidence when you open your mouth and you're ready to go. Deep breath and you go for it great eye contact. You want that audience to feel connected with you. So you're going to look and in this moment, now we're using the Zoom venue. So we've got us one little spot that we're looking in. But as we were on stage, we were able to connect with as many as we could. We'll get back there again. But eye contact. And then you want to make sure that you're using appropriate gestures for your story. I call them intentional gestures. Some of us tend to be more hand motion movement. You know, I, I do a lot of moving with my hands. So I have to intentionally keep my hands still unless it's something related to my story. So if I'm actually thinking about something or I'm making a point, then that would be my intentional motion. So I work that into my story. Intentional movement, okay? Your voice is an important tool. You're gonna to be able to move your voice up and down. You might have to use high voice pitch. Or you might have to use a low pitch. You might have to speak fast. Or you might have to speak slowly. Your voice, very important. So we're going to play another game. Here we go. I'm going to use a sentence. And this time, if you like, you can raise your hand. And if you would like to say um, and participate in this particular one, that would be great. Just let us know. I'm going to give you a sentence. And the sentence is, I am going to walk the dog. I am going to walk the dog. Now, the first way we're going to say that is as if you're in a hurry. So let me know if you would like to, when you think about it, and want to say it out loud. We want to hear you. Is there, and my uh, helpers will alert and let us know who that might be. I am going to walk the dog, and you're going to say it as if you're in a hurry. Okay. Is there anybody that would like to unmute and say that? You see anyone? I'm gonna walk the dog. Ooh, there we go. I love it. All right, here's your next one. I am going to walk the dog as if you could care less. All right, who would like to do that one? I gotta walk the dog. She was. <laughs> <laughs> as though you could care less. You don't even care. Okay. Oh, here's a good one. As if you were afraid. I am going to walk the dog as if you were afraid. I was going to walk dog. Oh, oh, good job. All right. How about this one? As if you are unhappy. You're not happy about doing it. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Uh, I was going to walk the dog. 
Awesome. <laughs> How about this one? As if you're disgusted. <laughs> I was going to walk the dog. Ew. <laughs> All right. How about one more? As if you're pleading. Is that what I was pleading? I'm going to walk the dog. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, good job. I love it. One sentence. All oh, these wonderful, wonderful emotions. Y'all are amazing. Good deal. Well, again, you've got to be happy with the stories that you choose because you're going to tell them over and over and over again. Oh, yeah. So you've got to be able to love them. And each time, it's like I tell my stories. I've been telling some of them for, <clears throat> I'm not going to tell my age, over 20 years. Okay, I'll admit it. And I can still get goosebumps with them because I, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm thinking of one now and I'm trying not to cry. Um, because the stories are so personal and you love them so much that you connect right. Oh, gosh, why did I think about that story? <sighs> um, that you connect right away with the people. Okay, <clears throat> clear the brain. <sighs> ah. <sighs> I'm there. <laughs> Look how, see what they do to you? These stories are, are, are something else. All right, now, what if I'm afraid, Miss Vivian? I get up there and oh, I get scared. All right, guess what? You are not alone. There is not one storyteller that is not broken out in stage fright bumps. Oh, well, okay, maybe not bumps, but we do have stage fright. We get nervous, all of us. I call it the butterflies. They're just all over the place. And you're, I am trying to get these butterflies to get into formation, okay? So the best way to do that, I feel, is to just take deep breaths and hold them and let it out. Deep breath. Oh, this feels really good. I need to keep breathing. <laughs> and then you might even want to do some exercises, get your mouth all limbered up. Look, I look like a fish goldfish. Vika oh, vocalize. Limber up those shoulder blades. And what I really like doing is just walking. Somehow just the, the motion of moving limbers and calms me down. You might even want to put on some soft music or maybe some jazz or so, whatever it does and whatever music calms you or gets you in the mood, go for it. All right, Miss Vivian, I'm, I may be okay now, but what if I forget my place? Oh, <laughs> again, <laughs> don't worry. Now, here's the deal. Don't freak out. Everybody does that too. Now, the main thing is just remember, no one else knows. Yeah, you know your story. No one else will know that you've lost your place. Suggestion. Maybe you say, well, now, do you remember that place where I told you where the rooster was trying to get back to the hen house? Mm -hmm. Well, he did. He got back and he, so you're telling them that gets you back on track, gives you a chance to remember where you left off and then you are smooth sailing moving right on <laughs> take care now here's your ending you've done it all the voice is amazing the gestures are wonderful and you've got them going and all right how do i end this story <laughs> well number one don't let them fall abruptly think of it this way You've been going on this ride with them and they've been following, they've been with you on this little roller coaster of emotions, this journey, and here they are right here. And you go, done. How would you like to be up there in the roller coaster and they go, oh, ride's over, get down. They're like, what? <laughs> I don't think so. So you want to get them and ease them down gently. Then you can take off the safety harness and they can exit. In other words, I'm at the end of the story. My voice gets a little softer, slower. There's some moments when I'm out and I say thank you. 
And I give another moment. And then we're ready to walk off. And that gives them a chance to easily disconnect because they've been with you the whole time. All right, now here comes another one. I'm going to tell a story and I want you to be my best helper. You're going to tell me how to improve my story. Okay, and I'm going to need all the help I can get. And you'll find out in a minute. Be sure you put it all down in that chat. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> I'm going to tell the story about the three, uh, three pigs. And um, let me see. Uh, once, upon, once, uh, once upon a time, there were three pigs. And there was uh, a mama pig, no, wait a minute, um, three pigs, uh, and the mama pig told the, them to, um, to get out and go get a job. Okay, so they left, and when um, they went out, they went and they got, um, they got, they got, they got uh, uh, sticks, they got wood, they got, uh, wait a minute, let me start, I don't, um, they got, Oh yeah, now I remember. They got bricks, and they got bricks, and then they started uh, building on their houses, and then um, they made houses. They made three houses, and then the uh, wolf came, and he um, uh, he 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 said, "Knock knock," and they said, "Who's there?" And then he uh, they he said, "Me," um, and then he. Um, they said, no, you can't come in. And then he went to the top of, he went to the top of the roof and then he uh, came through the chimney and he came in and then he, um, they uh, took sticks and they beat him out the house and he left and the end. Okay. <laughs> oh, the end, <laughs> I'm back. Well, now, <laughs> how did we enjoy that story? <laughs> oh, wow. I moved a lot. Good job. I ummed a lot. Oh, mm -hmm. oh learn my story better. <laughs> Good. Hard to hear me. Ah, I need to rehearse more. Your eyes were down. Oh, Good. Talk slowly, make a meaning of your story, make them hear voices, make it fun. Could have done better. All right, thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> you all were listening. And you know what, there's some, one more thing I wanna mention. Um, when you're learning your stories, you make sure that you, you don't wanna memorize those stories, but you wanna be so familiar with them that they just automatically roll off your tongue. Now that was a wreck. That was one of those old stories. Miss Vivian should have known that story. It should have been very familiar. The only thing I would suggest that I memorize would be, what is that thing? Um, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, right? So some stories will have specific things that you need to repeat. Um, what's another one? Run, run as fast as you can. You can catch me. I'm the Gingerbread. Exactly. So those are the kinds of things you definitely need to, to memorize. But as far as your story, just be so familiar. It's like me. I see these pictures in my head as my story goes on. And I'm just going from that one picture to the next picture. Well, we're almost there. I want to say, get comfortable telling your stories in a variety of in a, various situations. Zoom is one of them now. We're all kind of getting used to it, adapting to this venue, but there will be a time when we'll get back to others. And so get excited about using this platform right now. And then maybe we can get back to um, the library telling stories, maybe in nursing homes, um, organizations, churches, whatever, festivals, schools, and at, well, saying festivals, how about this? We're here at TSA right now. You definitely want to continue to attend 
festivals of this sort and make sure that they've got some type of a youth uh, agenda, TSA, thumbs up. They are awesome in that category because we have venues for the youth to tell on stage, which is what our youth have done today. There's a venue for workshop, blah, and there's a also story swapping. So you want to get to, to those festivals. Now, right now, and right now, right now, um, we are just using this one, but you could also go on YouTube. You want to listen to seasoned storytellers. So there are storytellers that have put stories out on YouTube. Um, when we get back to festivals, make sure you get to know some of those seasoned tellers. Ask them how they got started telling oh. stories. Ask them little nuggets, like, what's your secret? <laughs> Observe them telling stories. You want to watch how they interact with the audience and watch how the audience reacts to them. It's amazing how that, that, that bond is created. There's always usually a table where they're uh, selling the books and supplies. Mosey over there, you're going to find how-to books. You'll find books with the tellers with stories in them. Um, you'll find videos and audio. So you want to just immerse yourself with as much information as you can. You're going to eventually find your own style. But in the meantime, watch and observe. Watch and observe. And the last thing I want to say is to keep yourself a little list. I call it my diary, my list diary, but you call it whatever. But in this list, you're going to have all of the stories that you're telling. And then when you get ready to tell a story, you go, let's see now, which story do I want to tell? You've got it right there. And your list is going to grow and it'll be very long. So depending on where you are at the drop of a hat, Someone will say, hey, tell a story. And you kind of got it there in your mind. You already have a list. I've enjoyed sharing with you. I hope that something I've said, um, another way that I've said it will, will <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it, <laughs> has helped someone. Um, this is a good time. If you have questions right now, I will try to answer. Uh, if I don't, and like I always say, if I don't know the answer, I will get right back with you. I will leave while you all are typing. If you have a question, I do have a handout that I'm going to put uh, into your, I'm trying to figure out where it is. La, la, la. Give you that handout. Um, oh, there it is. I see. Hang on a second. And uh, make sure that you can see it. There it is. Aha. There it is. Oh, I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> there it is. So you all can uh, get those little points. And this is just a, a summary, basically, of what we talked about today. Was there a question? Are we going to make something based on this? Um, I'm not sure quite. Uh, make something. Nicole, my suggestion is that you take these little nuggets and apply them to your storytelling. Um, so far, in fact, you are one of our tellers today and you did a magnificent job. So I would just say, if anything in these notes uh, uh, from this workshop works for you, go let me, do I need to use more voices or do I need to uh, slow my pace down or whatever the case, then that's what you do. But you did a magnificent job today as well. I, kudos to you. Whatever you attempted to show, I don't see it. Did you share a link or a file? Um, it's up. Oh, oh, I see what happened. It got shared to Nicole. <laughs> Let me redo it. How about that? I need to share it with everyone. Thank you. Let me redo it. Nicole said, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck to y'all. Okay, here we go. Let me do it one more time. How is that? Is that better? <laughs> I was just checking to see if y'all saw it. No, okay. No. <laughs> okay. Very good. You're so welcome. I'm new to the organization. I was impressed with the kids today. Mm -hmm. And I think mine might enjoy learning to tell stories. Is there a formal program for young tellers? 
my suggestion is wherever you are, locate a guild in your area. Um, I know in our, I'm, in, I'm from the uh, Waco area and we have the Heart of Texas Storytelling Guild. Raise your hand, Nicole. Ta-da, Nicole is part of that, yay. <laughs> and so we try to mentor our kids um, and give them an opportunity to tell stories often. Uh, but I'm sure whatever, wherever you find a guild that caters to kids would be the best, uh, the best route to go. And then as they get older and get better and better and better, hey, they'll be right here at TSA. <laughs> any other story, any other questions? Oh, it looks good. Well, okay, well, I wanna say thank you to everyone that um, came today. And again, I, oh, what's another? I'm in the Rockwall Storytelling Guild. If you're, oh, well, go ahead on Ms. Vivica. <laughs> 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 Letting you know where she is. Okay, I'm gonna turn it back over to Ms. Jackie. Thank you all again. And I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. Take care. <laughs> Oh, we are so thankful, Ms. Vivian. Everybody give her a thumbs up. Let her know that we appreciated it. Woo! <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.